Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Welcome to Olive Board. This is Arzu Kakkar and in this particular session, we will be covering, you can say, the agricultural concepts which are very important from your NABARD grade A exam point of view. So I hope that you all uh, basically have understood the syllabus of the exam, the exam pattern of NABARD grade A. If not yet, then please do watch out the uh, lecture. Uh, it is there on the Olive Board platform which is taken by Riti ma'am where you can understand the whole concept before preparing for any exam, whether it is RBI, whether it is NABARD, or whether it is UPSC, any sort of exam is there, you just need to have a look over the exam pattern first of all, then syllabus, and the third important point, point is the previous year questions, right? Then you should start your preparation, I would suggest that. So please do like, share and subscribe this channel. We'll, I'll wait for a few minutes so that uh, uh, you all can join this lecture and then I'll start uh, with uh, the topic. Please do give a thumbs up sign to the session if you have joined the lecture so that basically marking your attendance so you can mark your attendance also by uh, giving a thumbs up sign by liking the session as well. And if audio and video is coming proper at you end then also please give uh, me a thumbs up sign in the chat section so that uh, I may get to know that audio and video is clear and then I will continue. ARD section. So you all know that from agriculture and rural development, this particular section is very important from your exam point of view. You need to solve some objective questions and some descriptive answers also you need to write. So you need to have a better understanding of the concepts. So what, what all is required from a static part should be good and that, uh, that too to uh, the current affair domain. So you need to merge both these things. You need to have an integrated approach for your phase one and phase to so much so that whenever you are going through any article you need to uh, understand it from both the perspectives ki how you can uh, mark or how you can get an objective question from this point uh, and how you can mention this particular point in your answer writing as well so as far as answer writing sessions are concerned for your descriptive answer writing there also you have sessions every thursday we will be meeting so that we can uh, have uh, a hold over our answer writing also I am seeing that uh, some of you have joined the lecture then anybody here can please give me a thumbs up sign in the chat section if audio and video is clear. Good evening to all to uh, basically who have joined the lecture. Please make it an interactive session by uh, uh, giving your input also. Can I expect any thumbs up sign in the chat section? Anybody here can let me know if audio and video is clear. Or should I start the lecture? Thank you, Nikita. Thank you so much. And before starting this lecture, I would expect that you have pen and paper in your with you, Nikita. Everybody here, I would say ki please do have a pen and paper before uh, this this lecture because we need to write down something great then so here uh, what we will be discussing today is regarding agronomy so what agronomy is all about different agroclimatic zones i i'll discuss few of them in this lecture now but whole soul before starting this lecture let me tell you that uh there are two things, two things in such a manner ki first of all we need to have the knowledge and second we need to do a PhD in that or not. Yes, it is important uh, ki if you want to clear NABARD grade A, NABARD grade B then only that much is required that is 
demanded by the exam right so please don't do phd into that make sure that your hard work and your smart work is uh, basically uh, comes together it is a combination of hard work and smart work rather than going deep into any topic just make sure that you are covering that part of the topic that is directly linked to your exam and they have the probability the maximum chances of coming into your examination right and uh, uh so and second uh, point that i wanted to tell before starting this lecture is the main agenda of this session is to make you understand so rather than just reading the lines i i know i don't prefer reading lines you you all can do it by yourself you are very much uh, intelligent this much i know but yeah ki rather than reading the lines i would uh, try to explain you the topic and you yourself can then uh, understand it easily right so this will be uh, you can say the pattern that i follow and as far as today's lecture is concerned very uh, very good evening so as far as today's lecture is concerned we are talking about agronomy and we will be covering agronomy so before moving ahead can anybody here tell me what you understand by agronomy anybody here uh, can tell me what do you understand by agronomy no problem at all all we need is serious aspirants all we need is that you please focus on whatever we cover today anybody here can please tell me ki what do you understand by agronomy make it an interactive one just just think what uh, just write it down if you if you have any idea ki uh, what what agronomy is all about okay so uh, can i expect any answer or should i move forward what is agronomy nikita shubham chalo let me tell you now um i i don't think that you you are writing or i i don't know so let me tell you now what agronomy is all about so yeah here it is agro nomi this is the case hai na so these are french words agro means a uh, land nomi means management so here what you are doing you are doing land management so agronomy is what agro nomi agronomy is that branch of agriculture listen to me very carefully you have different terms and terminologies in agriculture as well so agronomy is that branch of agriculture that deals with crop production plus soil management right are you getting my point so what agronomy is it is that branch of agriculture that deals with crop production plus soil management as well so i can say that this is a branch so uh, before starting with the agri just just give me a second just give me a second I think uh, now the PPT is there in front of you. Exactly, the study of field crops, science and technology. It is a branch of agriculture which deal with crop production and their management. So simply, you are having two terms in your hand. Absolutely correct that you are saying that you are talking about is soil management and. crop production right so exactly so this is the case soil management and crop production so if i take these two points in my mind then i can come to a conclusion that agronomy is basically what agronomy is that branch of agricultural science and technology of using plants where you use plants and produce what produce food produce fuel produce fiber and land reclamation so it is an integrated approach it is a holistic perspective why you are saying it is integrated and holistic because here you are also uh, basically talking about soil management 
right it, you are understanding ki how see when you are growing a crop how your crop will interact with the soil what all is demanded what all is needed the climate factors the environmental factors all things need to be taken care of we talk about sustainable development don't you think so so agronomy basically deals to grow crops but effectively this is very important you need to grow crops but effectively by conserving the natural resources by protecting the environment are you getting my point are you getting my point you have, you need to protect your environment you need to make sure the ground water depletion that is going that we are dealing with today it should be taken care of yes you need to produce high uh, yield variety you need to have your maximization of yields by, uh, with new cultivators but at the same point of time you need to make sure that you make better water use right this is the scope of agronomy what i'm talking about is the scope is the objective of agronomy that talks about appropriate soil management appropriate fertility management we have water we have fertilizer so we think ki we uh, what what we generally do is excessive use of it rather we should understand ki excessive use of anything is harmful right so we need to be um, you need to understand by ourselves ki how much is required what is the limit what is the extent so you need to make sure fertility management is also there yes you want to increase your crop yield but at the same point of time increasing the crop yield do not means excessive use of fertilizers <coughs> right clear till now so this i think you have now a rough idea of what agronomy stands for now you all know that india have basically deal has agro climatic zones we have different climate different environmental conditions in uh, every other state from jammu kashmir to kanyakumari from east to west we have different temperature we have different soil we have different uh, climatic conditions different rainfall distribution different pattern of rainfall distribution different vegetation so why not to uh, basically make sure that we grow crops based on the climatic zones right or wrong right or wrong so we need to ensure that we grow crops based on the climatic zones this will help you in uh, where we talk about sustainable development sustainable management we talk about ki why if if in a certain area there is a uh, basically uh, yeah proper supply of water so make sure that uh, you grow crops that are suitable to that that particular uh, area if you have uh, this particular jammu and kashmir so make sure that you grow crops that uh, bear that at uh, a uh, winter temperature if you have bundelkhand region so make sure that you grow such type of crops that basically deals with that vegetation that area because that area is dry and uh, not not that much of water so making uh, to ensure that this particular as in so it will lead to a crop diversification also agro climatic zone is one such concept where you will optimize your agriculture production and at the same point of time you are taking uh, you can say environment protection also you are taking all the safeguards you are increasing the farm income also you are making judicious use of natural resources that agronomy talks about yes or no yes or no and at the same point of time in your in your country uh, you, you will reduce the regional inequalities there are regional inequalities also one region wise inequalities are there if you are making sure that particular region uh, suits that particular climate and you are uh, coming up with a crop that suits to that particular area you are creating employment opportunity you are making better judicious use of natural resources you are reducing the regional inequalities and you are developing the agriculture also you are increasing the farm income also you are optimizing your agriculture production yes or no 
correct so now if i talk about agro climate zone in india so if i say that it is a holistic approach of area planning you have different areas now you plan according to area so that there is a long term resource efficiency and sustainability so based on your geographical area based on the agro climatic factor based on soil type based on topography based on climate based on cropping pattern characteristics you divide your zones and then you you come up with your agriculture production right or wrong are you all getting my point is thing are things making sense to you are things making sense anybody here who can tell me correct nikita so if i talk about agro climatic zones first of all now uh, i'll expect that you all have pen and paper with you everybody here who is attending this session if you have pen and paper then i'll be moving forward with agro climatic zones i can wait for a minute so that if you want to go and take your pen and paper uh, so please do uh, because it is very important to uh, write down the things now when i talk about agro climatic zones what we need to take care of we will talk about the soil we will talk about temperature and rainfall we will talk about the crops that will grow there and yeah we will talk about the area that particular agro climatic zone that particular zone lies right so please in your uh, notebook create a table create a table write here zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 and so on right and then come up with certain columns write here uh, the area zone 1 uh, comprises of write here temperature and rainfall the the, the characteristics or the distribution pattern write here the type of soil and write here the crops that are grown in such a manner please create a table it will be very easy for you by the end of this lecture to revise if you have already created some sort of table then again i will say to create a table because it will lead to better revision also once again how many times you revise this much matters right so when you have drawn this table then i'll move forward and please let me know in the chat section once it's done we will not uh, uh, take uh, cover all the uh, basically a uh, 13 one here we will initially have a look over so few of few of them uh, because otherwise it will be clumsy for you and you will say ki things are getting confused so rather than uh, creating a confusion initially i will take few zones and then uh, to the next lecture i'll take the next one done correct great and my second point that you need to understand is uh, ki if you need to remember the agro climatic zones of india just make sure that you know the area that zone covers only this much is required because i can expect from all of you that you know ki if i'm talking about zone 1 that that uh, covers the area of jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh then i know ki winters will be harsh and what all will be the rainfall pattern there will be alpine kind of vegetation the how how the trees will be apple here is mostly grown right if i'll talk about like this particular area fourth fifth sixth zone i know that this particular area is having alluvial soil right if i talk about like zone 7 or zone uh, 8 i know ki zone 7 or 8 is basically plateau region it, it deals with madhya pradesh chhota nagpur plateau area is there i should have things in my mind now please make sure that you paste this map in your mind do learn all the agro climatic zones areas what are the areas that comprise of uh or are under the which zone if i talk about zone 7 so rather than remembering ki okay this was the soil this was the temperature it quickly strikes into my mind ki okay zone 7 was an area that was having chota nagpur plateau so yeah what all will be the temperature there what will be the kind of soil only just remembering the area i'll quickly have a, a 
glance over the soil, the crop. If I talk about uh, like area zone eight, so you will quickly strike in your mind that okay, zone eight is Bundelkhand region. So Bundelkhand region, may we don't have that much of rainfall. That particular water uh, is not available in that particular area. The rain, uh, you can say, the due to orographic rainfalls also the rain, जो है वो सारी की सारी उससे पहले ही हो जाती है. तो वहाँ पर ज़्यादा बारिश भी नहीं होती है, right? तो वहाँ की crops फिर कैसी ही होगी? right so this thing you need to create in your mind a picture needs to be created please make sure that you learn all the areas now so here is a list that i am giving you please do remember that if i am talking about western himalayan region i am talking about jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh and uh, uttarakhand or up or uttaranchal also so here you can see western himalayan region let me quickly uh, give you a glimpse of the zones this is zone 1 it is western himalayan zone clear nikita it is zone 2 that is eastern himalayan zone right if i talk about zone 3 it is zone 3 that is lower gangetic plains if i talk about zone 4 then it comes to be upper gangetic plains right sorry middle this is middle one middle gangetic plains zone 5 is upper gangetic plains and zone 6 is trans gangetic plains which comprises of punjab and haryana clear 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 make it create this thing in your mind 1 then 2 then from the lower end you will start your 3 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the pattern now. 1, 2, then 3, 4, 5, 6. Clear? This pattern should be there in your mind. So now if I talk about Eastern Himalayan range, it will quickly strike you. Okay, I'm talking about Assam, Sikkim, West Bengal and Northeastern states. If I'm talking about lower Gangetic Plain, I'm talking about this area, West Bengal. If I'm talking about middle Gangetic Plain, I'm talking about West Bengal, uh, Bihar. If I'm talking about upper Gangetic Plain, zone, please do remember the numberings also, zone 5. So zone 5 is Uttar Pradesh. If I'm talking about zone 6, then I'm talking about Transgantic Plains, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Rajasthan. Clear? Now let's begin with the zone 1. So this thing is clear that zone 1 is Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Kumau Gharwal areas of Uttaranchal. In your notes, please write it down. Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Kumau Gharwal areas. So this comes under area. If I know ki that area is Jammu and Kashmir wala area, so you will see a great variation. Summers, how, what do you think? How the summers will be in Himalayas, Himachal and that area where you have uh, great Himalayas, right? Jaskar range is there, Peer Panjal range is there, Dholadhar range is there. I hope that you all are aware of this particular thing, geography. So, Winters are very severe, very cold conditions are there. Temperature even goes to minus 4 degrees Celsius. And if I talk about Abhi ka temperature, July ka temperature, it is mild. Hai na? The current temperature, average temperature is goes from 5 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. The rainfall is 150 centimeter. There is a zonal arrangement also. There are hill slopes. And based on this, you uh, grow your, you cultivate. Right. So what is the main crop? If I talk about crop, please do remember that rice is the main crop of this region. You have terraced fields there. Right. If I talk about other fruits, so it is temperate kind of area. Jammu and Kashmir Raja is a temperate region. So what all are the temperate fruits? Apple, pear. And if I talk about crops, wheat, potato, barley, maize, write it down. If I talk about soil, so you all know there are valleys, Spiti Valley, right? Spiti Valley is there, Duns are there, Dehradun. It's all geography now. So Duns, they have thick layers of alluvium, while hill slopes, if I talk about hill slopes, they have brown hill, hilly soil. And yeah, some teep 
टी प्लांटेशन आर ऑल्सो देयर दैट हैव स्टार्टेड इन घरवाल कुमाओ हिल सो दिस इज योर जोन वन आई होप दैट नाउ यू आर गेटिंग माई पॉइंट इफ आई रिमेंबर कि जोन वन इज वेस्टर्न हिमालयन रीजन एंड जोन वन इज जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हिमाचल प्रदेश वाला एरिया ऑल अदर थिंग्स बिकम्स ईजी राइट और रॉन्ग राइट और रॉन्ग I hope that now you are understanding what I was saying. I'll wait for a minute so that you can write it down and please do remember by the end of this lecture don't close your notebook just quickly go through learn revise whatever you say once again whatever you covered in this lecture otherwise it's just or you can say it's it's wasteful. Until and unless you will not revise once again, you will not remember, and things things will go in vain. Make sure that when I'll end this lecture, you once again will go through the entire table that you have created. You will learn, and when I meet you again, you will quickly go through whatever you covered in the previous lecture. Right, Nikita? So moving to the next particular uh, zone, we have covered zone one, right? And now I and by the end of the lecture, na I'll ask you that particular zone, which zone was there, which zone was there. So please be attentive. I'll ask certain questions also. If I talk about second zone, zone two, this is Eastern Himalayas. Hey na, Purvanchal Hills are there, Dafla, Miri, Abor, Mishmi Hills are there, Meghalaya is there, Her, Chirapunji. There, there. If I talk about vegetation, some kind of evergreen forests are also found. right so now if i talk about the eastern himalaya you have in your mind ki eastern himalaya is specifically northeastern states right now let us have a look over the eastern himalayan region it consists of please write it down in the area sikkim darjeeling assam hills nagaland meghalaya manipur mizoram tripura how is the topography yes the topography is rugged absolutely how is the forest cover some uh, yeah we we also have an understanding ki we find evergreen forest there the rainfall is achhi khasi rainfall ho jati hai yahan par over 200 cm if this much is the rainfall then definitely the forest cover will be thick right if i talk about temperature so in july in these days the temperature lies between 25 degree to 33 degree and in january it is 11 degree to 24 degree so we can say the temperature also the climate is sub humid right if i talk about soil it is less fertile it is thick and it is brownish if i talk about main crops you all know tea is there fruits like uh, orange pineapple lychee and some crops like rice potato maize clear understandable things are easy no rocket science nothing it's just your interest it's just your interest if you have an interest if you are serious and as if you are serious with your studies you are a, you def, you have that goal to achieve you want to ace through you want to clear na bar then definitely uh, you you will find you find these things easy we we also have a paid course where i'm teaching uh, ard section as well as current affairs you can check it out on uh, uh, the olive board platform so Done, Nikita. Can I move ahead? Anybody here who can uh, write down in the chat section if they are done? Please make this session interactive. I always say it's not about only a single aspirant. It's all about everyone who is serious with their studies. Great. Moving to the next one now. So here we have covered two agroclimatic zones: Zone One and Zone Two. Okay, so here we are talking about zone one and zone two. Next comes your zone three. This is what where comes where your you can say Ganga makes a delta, है ना? Here you find mangroves, Sundarban, right or wrong? Geography comes in again. It is lower Gangetic plains. 
what zone 3 is all about which area is there uh, lying under zone 3 write down in the chat section which area is there in zone 3 lower gangetic plane which is zone 3 which state comes under zone 3 Bihar, West Bengal, lower gangetic zone, absolutely correct. But which area, which state I was asking about. So this region uh, basically have some part of uh, Bihar, West Bengal, entire West Bengal and Assam Valley. If I talk about rainfall, yeah, rainfall lies from 100 centimeter to 200 centimeter. Right. Temperature. 26 degrees Celsius to 41 degrees Celsius and in January 9 degrees to 24 degree. Please do remember the main crop that is grown. It is rice. Rice is the main crop here also. If I talk about middle Gangetic Plain region, I am talking about this region. Bihar and some parts of UP, Jharkhand, Sebi, some area is there. So yeah, so it is Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Please do remember in middle Gangetic Plains, it is except Chota Nagpur Plateau. Because in Chota Nagpur Plateau, uh, it comes under zone 7. Right? Very important point. Please do remember, Chota Nagpur Plateau is not in zone 4. It is in zone 7. When I talk about zone 7, I'll let you know. Clear? So now in zone 4, I am talking about middle Gangetic Plain region and where, which, which if I talk about this area, just give me a second. You all have studied rivers. So from here comes Ganga and all the tributaries of Ganga uh, join Ganga. So this zone, this area, the soil is alluvial soil right or wrong i hope that you have uh, gone through soils also you know laterite soil black soil uh, alluvial soil right so here you will find alluvial soil if i talk key okay can anybody here please tell me in zone 4 which kind of soil quickly it will should strike in your mind ki alluvial soil right it is drained by ganga river and its tributary so things becomes easy when you know just the region Rainfall is from like 100 centimeter to 200 centimeter. The crops that are grown in that particular area in uh, alluvial soil in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, it is rice, maize, millets, okay? wheat, gram, barley, peas, mustard, potato. So some kharif crops are also there and rabi crops are also there. Both. I'll talk about kharif and rabi crops also in the other sessions as well. So I hope now zone 4 is clear to you. If zone 4 is clear to you, then we are dealing with now zone 5 and coming to zone 6. Thoda sa or upar chalte hai. Zone 1, then we had zone 2 and then 3rd zone, 4th, 5th and 6th. So now we are in 5th zone. This is your 5th zone. Somewhat same, somewhat same. But thoda sa bab thoda aur upar ja rahe hai. So there you will see ki you are taking as Uttar Pradesh as a very large area. So now you are in the central and western part of Uttar Pradesh. The temperature thoda sa yaha par kam ho jata hai. And kyunki ab thoda aur height par ja rahe hai. It is um, continental area bhi hai. Kyunki yaha par to dekho it, it uh, somewhat yaha par it, it is coastal area. Now you are entering into continental area. No only land is there. Right? Only land is there. So the rainfall is 75 centimeter to 150 centimeter. Intensive agriculture region. If asked which region is intensive agriculture region, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, zone 5. You will see wheat, rice, sugar cane in Uttar Pradesh, millet, maize, oil seed, pulses. Oil seeds and pulses ke baare mein, when you are having, uh, you can say oil seed, pulses, cotton, when you are having ki this much is the export, this much is the import, this much is the production. So you should have an understanding ki okay, oil, uh, oil seeds and pulses are grown, they are the main crops of upper Gangetic Plains. So whenever you are going through current affairs, this information should strike in your mind that is your static information. Are you getting my point? How you are making an integrated approach? 
right now if i talk about the last zone that is zone 6th it is transgangetic plane region now just just have a look zone 5 is there where there is intensive agriculture if i'm talking about the 6th zone it is transgangetic plane which region which area which state comes under the zone 6 can you please write it down anybody here both of you i hope that uh, you are writing it in your table as well so rather than just going through points or making this whole soul paragraph it will be easy for you if you will have a glance of your table when when the exam approaches punjab haryana absolutely correct so punjab haryana comes under the zone 6th and which uh, which zone zone 6th is termed as transgangetic plain region right so here punjab haryana delhi chandigarh ganganagar district is also there of rajasthan which is at the border so uh, yeah uh, this particular region uh, is there that comes under trans ganga plain climate are has semi arid characteristics also abhi in july the temperature goes from 26 degree celsius to 42 degree celsius बहुत ज्यादा गर्मी भी होती है ह्यूमिड क्लाइमेट भी होता है इन जनवरी टेम्परेचर गोज फ्रॉम सेवन डिग्री सेल्सियस टू ट्वेंटी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस रेनफॉल इट हाँ बहुत ज्यादा नहीं होती है जैसे कि नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न स्टेट्स में होती थी वहां पर तो टू हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर पे भी रेनफॉल चली जाती है रब टोपोग्राफी थी हेयर इट इज सेवेंटी सेंटीमीटर टू वन ट्वेंटी फाइव सेंटीमीटर यू ऑल नो कि वट टाइप ऑफ क्रॉप आर ग्रोन इन पंजाब हरियाणा वीट शुगर केन कॉटन राइस ग्राम पल्सेस ऑयल सीड्स अब ऐसा तो नहीं है ना प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग इट इज नॉट कि दिस इज अ स्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री कि यहाँ पर ही ऑयल सीड ग्रो होगा इन पल्सेस ग्रो होंगे इन द रीजन इन इन जोन सिक्स ऐसा कुछ नहीं होगा दिस इज अ ट्रांजिशन आई यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट जोन फिफ्थ में ऐसा नहीं है कि दिस इज अ स्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री दिस इज अ स्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री नॉट एट ऑल इट इज अ ट्रांजिशन you can expect certain crops here you can expect some crops of this particular area right uh if let let's say this is eastern western coastal plain so i hope that you know ki there there is a uh, evergreen forest lying but yahan par due to orographic rainfall so this is the case now This, there are western ghats here right when uh, due to the orographic rainfall where all the rains jo hai yahan barish pehle sari ki sari mountain ke is taraf ho jati hai on the leeward side barish hi nahi hoti hai isliye yahan par kya hai yahan par thick evergreen forest hai lekin thoda sa aap aage jaoge to aapko semi evergreen fir deciduous dekhne ko milenge kyunki as you are moving inwards jo rainfall hai wo kam ho rahi hai सो so, ऐसा नहीं है कि एक थिक देर इज अ थिक लाइन की इसके बाद तो सीधा सेमी एवरग्रीन शुरू हो जाएंगे नो आई यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सो नाउ आई वुड से कि प्लीज क्लोज वट एवर यू हैव रिटर्न एंड नाउ जस्ट आई आस्क समथिंग यू नीड टू राइट इट डाउन बाय जस्ट इमेजिनिंग आई वुड से right can i ask certain questions now now just give me a minute okay then so i'll ask certain questions and you need to give me the answer no matter your answer goes right or wrong it's just ki you at least mention okay if i talk about agronomy what are the two main terms of agronomy two main words two keywords that comes in the definition and where you can completely uh, understand what agronomy is all about initially we had two words what were they that defines agronomy anybody here can tell me should i expect science and technology <laughs> science and technology yeah it is a branch of agriculture science and technology but agronomy is what it is a branch of agriculture with 
two words were there crop production and soil management remember are you getting my point am i audible can i expect answers everybody please make this session interactive yeah until and unless you will not answer ko koi fayda nahi hoga fir aise right okay so now okay okay cool now can anybody here please tell me please do tell me uh, the one who is answering i am not able to see your name okay can you please tell me zone uh, zone 6 zone 6 is which agro climatic zone crop production and soil management correct nikita my next question i have put the next question which zone is zone 6 transgantic zone absolutely correct which zone is zone 2 which zone is zone 2 which zone is zone 2 Eastern zone, correct. Eastern Himalayas, you are saying specific, correct. Chota Nagpur Plateau comes under zone four. Yes or no? Chota Nagpur Plateau comes under zone four. Yes or no? Chota Nagpur Plateau comes under zone four. hurry up whether your answers are right or wrong it doesn't matter at least you you try your writing your uh, uh mentioning the answer this is what important is yeah it is lower gangtic zone absolutely correct so chota nagpur plateau comes under zone 4 uh, nikita trans gangtic zone is zone 6 and now i am talking about zone 4 bachche zone 4th is middle gangtic plains do you remember bihar the region of bihar comes under the zone 4th bhul gaye the middle gangtic zone correct please do remember which zone is the zone where there is intensive agriculture zone 4th zone 5th zone 6th first second third fourth fifth sixth which zone is a zone where there is intensive agriculture 1 2 3 correct nikita it is in seventh the uh, chota nagpur plateau is not in zone 4 it is in zone 7 i'll talk about zone 7 in the next lecture you yeah, are absolutely right now can you anybody please tell me which zone is a zone where there is intensive agriculture zone third no zone third zone third is not that zone where there is intensive agriculture or is it zone third no idea okay do you know zone 5 upper gangtic plain region now let me take you to the map now once again i'll quickly remind you what all you have covered it is zone 1 that is western himalayas it is zone 2 that is eastern himalayas it is zone 3 that is lower gangtic plains it is zone 4 that is middle gangtic plains it is zone 5 that is upper gangtic plains which is a region of intensive agriculture the central and western part of uttar pradesh and it is zone 6 the trans gangtic plain the area of punjab haryana and gangnagar 
so semi arid area is also included in it right this the zone comes of where there you have alluvial soil right there it, it is a zone with um, uh, you can say thick thick forest are there in zone 2 as well thick forest areas rainfall is maximum 200 cm tak ki rainfall hoti hai once you are clear with the areas you will easily remember what all are the climatic conditions the types of zone the type of soil that is found the topography as we know ki in eastern himalaya there is a rugged topography so zone 2 automatically is the zone where there is rough topography correct so here i'll end this session i'll meet you again uh, in next week with other climatic zones as well or or with any other topic whatever you say so what what do you want in the, in the next topic do you want ki should i continue with the next uh, other climatic zones or will you do by yourself or should i come with the next topic I think now you have an understanding of how to cover an agroclimatic zone. I think now that things are very much clear to you. So as far as other zones are concerned, you can easily go through the other zones. And if you like reading, if you like understood, if you understood what I what I taught today, so yeah, if you want to learn more, you can uh, join the uh, course also that I am dealing with to be continued. I I'll see. whatever comes in for your benefit i'll definitely go with that kyunki i think the rest of the zones uh, if you if you have an understanding ki how to cover a zone it becomes easy for you to cover all the zones now i let you know uh, as i have i have also given a table here the table i have also given ki what all uh, the map is there a table is there in the table you have the names also ki kaun sa zone kaun se कौन सी स्टेट कौन सा जोन में आता है तो भी आपके लिए आसान हो जाएगा ये राइट बट आई आई लेट यू नो विल सी व्हाट व्हाट कम्स नेक्स्ट इन द नेक्स्ट वीक टिल देन आई आरजू कक्कर विश एवरीवन हेयर अ वेरी बेस्ट ऑफ लक थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग थैंक यू फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग एंड एट द एंड आई ओनली एक्सपेक्ट की वेन आई एंड दिस लेक्चर आप एक बार इसको रिवाइज जरूर कर लेना ठीक है प्लीज डू रिवाइज वट यू हैव कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर टिल देन थैंक यू टेक केयर ऑल द बेस्ट गुड इवनिंग and ha please don't forget to like the video as well if you like the understanding if you like the knowledge if you like learning then please do give a thumbs up sign also thank you